Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, a couple of weeks ago, I did a video where I showed the best teams that we've captured on the optimizer for dungeons, um, the best champion builds, best stuff for like clan boss. And I got a load of positive feedback. People saying they want to see more. They want to see more areas of the game covered in this way. So here you go. This is going to be the best teams that we've captured for Doom Tower. I'm going to show you the best consistent teams for clan boss. And all of the best Hydra rotation teams. Some of the champions in these teams are probably quite obvious. But some of the champions, honestly, I did not expect to see them in any teams. Let alone in the fastest or the best teams we've got in the game. So, let's get into it. Let me know what you think of this type of comment, uh, content down below. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, are you insane? Hit the subscribe button, my friend. Let's do this. Okay. Firstly, I just want to call out a couple of stats. The optimizer, so anyone who leaves the little gizmo that records information, we call it the extractor, um, running, basically contributes towards this, this data, towards these teams. We have 5,800 daily users optimizing their gear. We have, uh, we've had over 9 million unique teams captured by the optimizer, and we've captured over 65 million battles to get to this kind of this plethora of stats where we can actually start to show you really interesting stuff. And by the way, there will be individual stats per person coming this year. We're not sure exactly when, but it's definitely on like the, the, the close horizon rather than like back end of the year. So that'll be quite fun for you to just be able to see your fastest teams, your best champions, all that type of stuff. Anyway, let's get into it. First one we've got here then is the, the best clan boss damage teams. Now, 280 million is a what what really is a variation of an infinity team in fact it is my team uh, i don't know if this is actually my damage it might well be my damage but it's an infinity team but the reason why i run this particular team is because it's quicker to get to a one key than the big boy infinity teams but basically what you've got here is a, a crisk with brogney kind of combo then got two champions extending buffs uh, basically making you have infinite shields, infinite crazy scaling Brogni shields. And then in this team, Turvold does all of the smacks. Um, we've then got the next best one, which is an unkillable team. Uh, Demitha team here, 290 million damage for an unkillable. That's kind of nuts, by the way. Um, Ninja doing a lot of the work here. Cardiel making it possible. Crazy speeds coming from Cardiel mixed with Seeker mixed with Lydia. And honestly, it's just rotating Ninja as many times as you can to get your damage away. Pretty cool team. Uh, we then got 300 million for an old school, kind of like tanky boy clan boss team using Krisk, uh, basically Valk shields, Brogni shields, using Brogni reflect kind of passive to do a lot of the damage. You've got Iron Brada giving you massive defense buffs and big hits. Lydia giving you your speed, and then Chris is extending all of those buffs so that they cover everything. Pretty cool old school team. We then got the two versions of the Infinity team. Now, I know that higher damage um, runs have been recorded, but they weren't recorded on the Optimizer. That's why we're seeing lower damage numbers than we've seen kind of like as the world records. But the two best teams that we've seen are two versions of the Infinity team. The double Yumiko, which eventually went on to break all of the world records here with Cadaver doing all of the work. This is a 1.48 billion damage. And then the next one is basically the same again, but without the double Yumiko. So you're relying on Hellborn, the rare, and Lanakis to keep going with those crazy extending shields. I'm sure you guys have seen the Infinity team. If you haven't, you should check out my video where I talk about this with uh, Victor Tez, who eventually smashed all of the world records. Him and Mullet Reaver were kind of back and forth for a long time, but both of them now basically hitting 2 billion with this same comp. Okay, these are the most used teams for Clan Boss End. So they're all unkillable teams. Surprise, surprise, they're the best way to get your job done. Uh, we've got here the Double Man Eater with Painkeeper Seeker, Ninja doing all the work. Basically the same team combo again in fourth place, uh, sorry, third place, but with the Ares and Demifa version. Uh, Deep subbing in for Seeker in this one, but Ninja again doing all of the work. In fourth place, though, we do have a Geo instead of Ninja type of comp. So, I mean, if you look at this, it's actually four epics and a rare. And it's our fourth most used 
clan boss team that we've captured 20,000 um, runs with this team comp going in the optimizer. Second place, second most used team we found for clan bosses, one of the old school uh, double man eater with seeker and pain keeper, getting you on a two for one damage comp with Fane doing all of the work. And then the most popular one is the same comp again, but with Draco doing all of the work. 58,000 runs we've captured of that particular comp. Let's move on then to the fastest Agref teams. So Agref, what you'll see here is a common denominator with all of these teams. And that is Venomage and Geomancer. These, those two make the comp work. Basically, Ven um, Geomancer puts the burnout onto the main boss. And every time you then take a hit, you've got a chance to proc that burn with the Geo passive. Venomage does heal reduction across the whole enemy team. And basically, the Spiderlings will counterattack, hit you. Geomancer then procs his burn, and the, the dude goes down. So that's the way this runs. And you'll see variations of the comp are basically all there to do the same job. Someone in the team to keep the comp alive. So you've got a Sir Nick, you've got a, a Man Eater, you've got a Rush Guard. You've got a Crisp with Vogoff, I guess, as the kind of defense mechanism there. And another Sir Nick here. So they're people to keep the comp alive. And then you've also got someone in there who's just going to blow up waves for, for speed. Ethos, Ray, uh, Ethos again. I guess Xavier Kavalax doing it on this one. And Herndig, uh, the dog, is doing it on that one, which is quite cool to see as well. Different variation. But 50 seconds going right the way up to 40 seconds for the fastest Agref team that we've captured. Pretty nuts. The fastest Sorath teams. Much slower. Almost double the time, or in fact, double the time of the fastest Agref. What we got here, we got a four man squad. Chilling four man squad in fifth place, 109 seconds. Basically, we've got here, I'm surprised this works so quick, honestly. You've got Xavier and Calvalax blowing up waves, putting poisons out. Uh, you've then got Drex for the burns. And I guess all that's happening here is that Drex is consistently putting burns out on the boss, and you're doing combinations of poison damage and enemy max hp hits to get the boss down but 109 seconds with this comp here i don't know if that's a consistent team or not but that's pretty damn nuts we then got champions that i was expecting to see so a Crisia coming in uh doing a lot of work double Crisia, 107 seconds lydia is bringing the block revive and then we've also got a burn in there to do a load of damage aoe hp burn from the tomb drain and we've got two Hanarak in here, really, to be cleansing those debuffs off. And I guess giving you a kind of speed and stuff going as well. Third place here, we've got basically an all-out poison comp with resets. So I guess it must end with Xavier doing the poison exploder on the boss. Because you do need to block revive the boss. But we've got a combination of poisons, poison explosions, and then an irresistible A1 HP burn from Ellen Ariel as well. Which is definitely very cool. 102 seconds second place 98 seconds is kind of a combination of those of the fifth team here and the third so you've got poison explosion enemy max hp hits and burns and a reset and then the fastest team now i'm guessing this one probably has to rely on refresh accessories i think so ghostborn aoe drop defense probably with refresh accessory on into a barren nuke probably with refresh as well. And then they do it again on wave two. And then I'm guessing, I, I don't really know why Romantu's in the team. I don't have Romantu yet. <laughs> and I don't, I've not used him a ton, but there must be something in his kit that is blocking the revive, I guess, or I don't know. I don't know, comment below. Why is Romantu in this team? Uh, Krizzy is in there for the smacks. And then we've got Burns again. Next one up then, Coldaf. So the fastest Magma Dragon killers much quicker again here, under a minute for all of these. In fact, all of these are within a few seconds of each other. And they all work in a very similar way, I think. So you've got enemy max HP damage. Yeah, so in fifth place here, double a Crisia enemy max HP. You've got a wave killer in a Leo. And then you've got an ally attack to throw out more damage with Cardiel. He's also giving you your speed. Chris is giving you speed and your provoke. And then you're just nuking this boss down. Um, in the second, in the fourth team here, I think we're basically doing the same thing. You've got three enemy max HP killers. So probably two waves and then the boss. 
and then uh, you've got Lydia doing your decrease defense and weaken and a provoke here. Team three doesn't have a provoke. So it's almost like that. I don't even care what you're going to do. I'm just going to blow you up. And, you know, you've got enemy max HP, Acrisia, Draco coming in with, I guess, an absolute cannon of an A1. Or he's just kind of setting stuff up for other people to nuke. Um, but yeah, this team I'd be interested to see running. I guess you've got two ally attacks bringing in high damage Draco and high damage Acrisia. Uh, and high damage Leo, I guess. So pretty nutty one. Team two, second fastest, basically the same time. You've got a similar type of comp. This time we've got Trunda, I guess, as the wave killer. Also does a decent amount of damage to the boss. Again, we've got no provoke here. So we're just going all out nuke. Ally attack from Kreela, bringing in the multi-hitter Crutraxa high damage, bringing in the high damage Acrisia, and uh, Lydia making sure you've got that drop defense and weaken out there, I would think. And then the final team, Bevowed for your Provoke. Um, I'm guessing we've got wave killing going on from Acrisia and Royal Guard, and then you've got three enemy max HP hitters. So enemy max HP rule in the day. Best Bordroff teams then. So Bordroff... Um, it's an interesting one because I don't run a fast team. I just run a solo champ. And I think a lot of people do. But some people here, under a minute. You only really go for times like this if you absolutely want to farm that gear. And I think bordroff has gone up in desirability, I guess. You know, it's more desirable set because resistance gear is more and more worthwhile to have. But yeah, we've got here anywhere from 70 seconds down to 52. Uh, again, you've got a couple of options here of teams, it looks like. The team in, in fifth base here is like a full turn meter control type of team. I guess they're all going to be wearing uh, accessories that put the shield on themselves, the blood shield ones. And basically, you've got a decreased speed from Stagnite. You've got turn meter control from one, two, three, and a lore as well. You're just going to keep that, uh, keep Bordor from ever having a turn and nuke him down. 69 seconds there. Very different team comp in team four. So it looks like you've got Baron and ethos as wave killers ethos has also got an enemy max hp or or max hp reduction so he would be breaking the shield uh you've got euros in here euros might just straight up be the boss killer but you've also got teardor so i'm guessing these two do some sort of poison shenanigans together and and a burner as well maybe it's the three things burn poison and popping it to get the fast times out i've not seen a team like this running and in fact this team here is similar as well two wave killers with uh the the ability to reduce the the shield and then you've got poisons burns and popping so uh this is a fun comp i like i like the idea of these it's very different to what i've seen running before that'd be quite cool to see actually full turn me to control one here similar to team five but with michelle coming in for some nukage as well and then the best team honestly i've never seen one of these comps where it's just yumiko by herself it's always double yumiko um, for the lucky people out there. But we've got enemy max HP nukage from Seer, uh, from Coldheart. We've got decreased defense and weaken here. And I'm guessing Yumiko's just keep resetting each other, resetting everyone else. And it's full on nuke, nuke, nuke until this thing is dead. Uh, it might re require some luck to get that consistently, I would imagine. So dr dr uh, the Griffin here. This is fast. <laughs> the Griffin gets wasted. Look at this. The fifth best, 39 seconds with a three man squad. Baron blowing up waves, Ninja and Drex absolutely humiliating the Griffin. We then go to 36 seconds and we've got enemy max HP, we've got a wave nuker, Ninja again. Ninja is, is kind of pretty prevalent here. Another enemy max HP, and we've got someone just giving us a bit of protection, I guess, in Brogni for some damage coming at us. But damn, 36 seconds here. We've then got. In third place, the two-man squad. I'm guessing this is Trunda nuking any waves and then an insane amount of luck with Relentless Gear and perhaps Refresh Gear combined to cons uh, consistently just get Ninja throwing out his Halburn and absolutely smashing the Griffin up. I don't think this could be consistently working, can it? Can this consistently work, a two-man squad on the hardest level of Griffin? Damn. Uh, second place, 32 seconds. We've got Hedgy. I was talking to, to Senti, actually, one of my mods, basically saying, why is Hedgy in the mix here? Because he's in the mix for the first two teams. 
basically it's relying on that refresh accessory so that he nukes wave one then nukes wave two and then you get onto the boss with everyone else's abilities good to go and you're basically then using your acrisias to do all of the work and ally attack here to to bring some damage and similar type of idea without the crisp just triple acrisia for the best team 22 seconds everything must have just run like an absolute dream to get a 22 second griffin team going on to iridoff then so 72 seconds down to 51 a bit slower this one what do you notice about iridoff oh yes that epic champion who's also the answer to iron twins also the answer to uh, agref we just saw there is the answer to iridoff so in every team comp that was fast geomancer is in the mix and the idea with this one is basically you get your burn away before the boss gets to have a turn you've got a wave nuker in every team leo ethos uh baron yeah ethos again baron again you've then got people that protect your team so it's basically geo get your burn out and then we're just going to protect our team whilst geo's burn uh does all of its work so yeah crazy team geo doing everything again in this one on to Bommel then. So this would have looked very different before Nishak was released. But actually, this is a, the kind of YST bomb comp. Ally, uh, ally attackers. So you've got in every team comp. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, two ally attackers in every team. You've got Arbiter in every team, given the weaken against a boss. And then you've got a Nuka for the waves in every team as well. Nuke wave one, Nuke wave two. Um, place your weaken whilst doing your ally attack and placing bombs with Nishak. Do it again with another ally attacker. Nishak then goes and reduces all of the bombs and Bommel gets absolutely imploded. So yeah, Bommel teams now, in, like Bommel, probably hardest Doomtower boss to beat, then becomes one of the fastest to farm. Kind of crazy. Dark Fae then, the final Doomtower boss. We have got a mixture actually of Enemy max HP, nukage, and term meter control. I guess they're all term meter control based, but you do have to beat your opposing team. Uh, I actually do it with almost exactly this team in the bottom right here, the slowest one, uh, but I don't use Baron. Maybe I should change it up. But basically, we go one champion to destroy waves. Baron is the champion here. Uh, probably it might be Hedgy or it might just be Septimus here. Septimus just A1 in everybody down. Uh, I do that on one of my comps. Hern dig here. Yeah, so, oh, Baron here, sorry. You basically got Ethos, someone to nuke enemy waves. Uh, you then get onto the actual boss phase. You've got someone who's going to destroy you. So, Hedgy just one shots you. Uh, Hern dig is really good at just one shotting as well, uh, or at least getting back to his ability and then one shotting. And you then got to turn me to control the boss. So, you've got a Crisia, Lissandra, Allure. Holstring's really good at that. Um, Geo, actually, I didn't think Geo would be in the mix, but maybe in this comp, you actually expect her to take a turn. So you do a bit of termite control, you do nukage, and then Geo puts his burn out, and then when she has a go, she actually kills herself. Quite cool. Uh, we've got Ninja in the mix on this one. We've got Triple Acrisia as the winning team with Ghostborn and Hedgy. Just absolutely insane. This Triple Acrisia popping up here, there, and everywhere. Uh, I guess it's probably the same person. I'm not sure. Let's move on to Hydra then. And what I've captured here is the highest damage team for, for each rotation, for Brutal and for Nightmare. And we do see some of the same faces popping up, but we also see some pretty interesting characters. So for Brutal, we have in fifth place 209,000 damage, moving up to first place 344,000 damage, which is kind of insane. Um, yeah, rotation one. So it looks like here we're using Shamal or the Bishop or Duchess. Do I see Duchess in this one? No, not, not in this one, actually. Generally, Shamal, or we're ignoring the uh, Head of Torment. Yeah, but basically somebody to control the Head of Torment. We're then using a mixture, really, depending on what team comp we're looking at. So we've got Necmo pushing speed, Takia and Acrisia for damage in the fifth team here. You've got... Uh, Gurped up boosting damage, and then really, I think just Mashald as damage in the fourth team. He must be pumping out an insane level of damage in that run. Look at that, 243,000. 
I can't see anyone else there who's really going to do any damage at all. Maybe Shamau a bit. But I reckon 200,000 of that damage is Michold in that run. Uh, you've then got just a bunch of people that protect him with the... Uh, Lydia sets up some damage, I guess. Chris protecting... Um, yeah, crazy. Gurped up, boosting your damage. The third team here, you've got protection from the Bishop, protection and speed and stuff from Elva, protection from Chris. And then it's like, let's unleash Sakia and double Acrisia to absolutely blow up the boss. Here we go with another double Yumiko team. Double Yumiko. This is, uh, I guess, the old Boomer team. So it's like, we've got boosted, well, we're putting decreased defense and weaken out. By Lydia, we're increasing our attack. Gurptuck's boosting our damage. And then Trunda is unleashing and probably blowing up heads. Yumiko then says, do it again. And you do it again. And then the other Yumiko says, do it again. And you do it again. And you just keep rotating some absolute insane nukes, I think. <laughs> and then this team here is, again, is similar to team five, I, uh, four, I guess. But we've got a second form of damage in Geo. And then you've still got a bunch of protect uh, protection. So you've got Rashold and Geo in the best team doing the damage. Lots of turn meter gain. Um, protection from the head of Torment. And protection using Mithrala whilst putting out Hex to empower the Mashal damage as well. I'm guessing Geo goes in the lead here. And Shamal just keeps pushing Geo's turn meter. So that Geo is just putting the burnout on all of the heads. But yeah, cool, brutal teams. Nightmare rotation then. Honestly, this top team, we see this one or variation of this one for almost every nightmare rotation. It's got to be the same dude. Look at the difference in damage. Fifth place, 151,000. Then 180, then 186. Then a jump to 329. And I think this is the same account. And then we've got an 858 nightmare. 858 nightmare for rotation one. Absolutely insane. You see Mishinaki popping up here. He does a lot of work on, on uh, Hydra. Uh, we see a lot of Tuhanarak coming in. Duchess now. So Duchess is protecting from ahead of Torment. Tuhanarak is just cleaning off debuffs and giving you speed. Drop defense and weaken from Olydia. Krisk for Provokage. And then Akrizia and Mishinaki doing damage. Here we bring Udo in. We've got the epic Udo coming into the best nightmare teams uh, with Geo. So you've got a combination here of Block debuffs on the enemy. Um, sorry, block buffs on the enemy. And you've got Geo throwing out burns. Chris provoking and doing a whole bunch of extending our buffs. Double Acrisia nuke. Similar type of team comp here, but we subbed into Hanarak instead of the Ugo. And then the top two teams, basically, you've either got Triple Acrisia or we've got Sikia, Acrisia, and Chris. But 858k, whoever's done that, absolutely insane, my man. Good job. We then go on to rotation two. We start to see some real variation of the teams here. Uh, I thought I'd see this combo a lot more in the top damage. Venus with Cupidus, because these two together do a lot of work. Uh, but you've basically got double damage dealer, Michold, Cupidus, um, and then you've got Venus with a bit of extra burn, three protectors, 169k, all the way up to just 240k. So not as big a span of difference here. We see Mother Sibel come in in fourth place i actually use mother sabo in one of my teams now after stream we're like you should get her out she's really useful and she was uh that aoe decrease speed on her a1 so damn good and uh consistent as well a shield for a lot of damage alongside a shamal here and a bunch of protectors third place we see tantra come in as the provoke king or uh, queen basically provoking up that head head of um head of decay it is headed. I always forget what the head's called that does the provokage, but or that you need to provoke. But yeah, I think it's headed decay. She's coming in doing that. Mishinaki with the damage alongside the Acrisia. And then we've got a few other support type uh, champs. Going up here to 217, we see Elva. First time we've seen her on the on the charts. Coming in protecting the team with the increased speed as well. Uh, we've got double damage with Mishinaki and Acrisia again. And then a couple of other kind of team protectors. But the best team, 240k. Mishinaki, Akrizia, Mashold, all in there for damage. And then the other three really in there are supporting cast. When we go on to Nightmare, we see a lot more, honestly, just a lot more damage dealers, I think. Double Hus, Sakia, 219k. Again, we go up to 626,000 damage for Nightmare. 
uh, Hydra on rotation two. And I think second place might be the sec uh, same dude again, but I'm not sure. Um, we start to see Nick Mothar coming in as a, a kind of turn meter booster. We're still seeing a lot of Ugo, a lot of Mithrala, um, Shamal popping up in teams as well. But yeah, we start to see quite a few of the same faces popping up in different orders for rotation one and two. When we get to three, I was really, really pleased to see this. Satila gets in a team. We've got the mighty Uko in a team. Uh, Mission um, Marishka, um, or Marishka, uh, I always say that wrong, pops up in a team. We've got Coronar in a team. I did not expect to see him. And uh, I guess he's in there for the provoke, but he's also doing some drop defense and attack shenanigans, I guess. But yeah, some really interesting kind of variations of comps uh, popping up here. But we do still see the same damage dealers again in Krizia, in Geo, in Mashald. Yeah, we're seeing some of the same damage dealers popping up. Sakia, they're all the big hitters when it comes to Hydra. When we get to Nightmare, again, 658k for rotation three. This same comp basically from rotation one popping up. Um, in, in second position, 361, but with a Duchess in the mix and so more protection, less damage. We see Teela again in a nightmare comp, the third best nightmare comp. This has got to be since she was buffed. 321k, Cantra as well, and Teela. Probably Teela, now an underrated legendary because she's been buffed and she's actually good. But Cantra is definitely one of the most underrated legendaries for this fight. I use it quite a bit myself. Double Acrisia, though, is doing a lot of work. Rotation four, then, onto Brutal. Some different faces again. We see a Tylisa, Tylisa coming in in the fifth best team alongside Ninja, alongside the Bishop as a protector in this team, and in some Acrisia damage as well. We see in the third spot here a Warchief as the provoker. Um, now, I know Warchief can do it, but I didn't think he'd do it to this sort of level. Uh, but I guess a lot of damage coming from Acrisia and Geo as well. And a lot of turn meter control and protection in this squad. Second place here. Uh, Teela steals the show again. Coming into the second place team alongside the double Acrisias. And I like to see this. The best team for Brutal has got a Tumisia in it. For the burns and the big hits. I do use a Tumisia in one of my teams. Really fun champion to use as well. Uh, Acrisia in there as well. And a lot of protection. But... Nightmare then. This is way lower. Look at this compared to the other rotations we've seen. Now, I'm not sure if this is because the big hitters just haven't had a rotation four for a long time. I can't remember. I don't know what rotation we're even on. Honestly, I just hit them as they pop up. But maybe it's because the rotation four hasn't been around for a while. Or maybe it's because it's much harder to do damage on it. Um, but we see here, I'm surprised to see a Venus not, to, uh, not accompanied by a Cupidus. So I guess Venus is in there for the HP burn and the drop defense and weaken rather than what she brings when Cupidus is around. Um, if we go into the fourth best team here, you've got Seafy in the mix. Got to be really for... It's just got to be for the, for the buffs, right? And the turn meter boost. Maybe the revive. Maybe it's revive in Geo with his, his kind of full turn meter back. I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised to see Seafy in a high level team like this. Also, Morley. Now, Morley is someone that I underrated for Hydra for a long time. Every time Morley has a turn and is then hit, she boosts turn meter on your whole team. So you can actually use her for both the provoke and you can use her as a really good turn meter boost for your squad. Um, so I guess that's the reason she's in there. She's also got a revive as well. And you've got damage with Acrisia. Another provoke option in, in a Cantra here. And then you've basically got Geo and Acrisia doing your damage. Um, moving on to the other teams, you've got a more conventional team here with two enemy max HPers and a, um, and a Geo for damage. And if we go right to the top team here, Shamal to protect you from the Head of Torment. Lots of turn meter and protection in these three. Drop defense here. And then you've got the nuke from Acrisia. But yeah, very small gap between the best teams on rotation four. On to five then. And I guess if I just call out some, some highlights for me, I love this third team. Rector and Bivald coming in. Bivald is a really good provoker for Hydra. Rector coming in to do the kind of Shamal or Duchess job, but a budget version. She's obviously doing it well because she's the third best team for Brutal here, um, alongside some of the kind of protectors and stuff with uh, Royal Guard doing the damage. The best team, though, goes double Husk and Geo for damage. 
using free champion Lydia, free champion Mithrala, and then Nekmo in the, the mix as well. Uh, second best coming in with more like a, a god squad, really. Ninja, Krisk, Mashald, Tuhanarak. Like really, really strong legendary champions. It's good to see the kind of two side by side. Nightmare then. Again, much lower damage scores here than some of the earlier ones that we've seen. We are seeing for the best team, 203,000 damage. Double Husk, Sakia, and then kind of like three people to set that damage up. And in second place, again, Venus without the Cupidus. So uh, I'm just surprised to see that as often as I have. But yeah, double with Krizia, the setup from Venus, protection from Duchess and Ugo, and then Chris for the Provoke and the extension of uh, buffs. On to the final rotation then, six. And any kind of standout here, I don't think there's any like standout different champions. I do like this second team comp, Tumisia and Husk and Geo, and actually, and Akrizia, four damage dealers just using Tahanarak and Cardiel for healing and protection. That's actually crazy. One thing which I didn't realize, I don't have Cardiel. He does so much healing with his A1, so much healing. Uh, you can actually kind of run no healers and just rely on Cardiel to do so much to keep your Hydra team alive. Very cool. Um, and then the final side end. So Nightmare, rotation six, 700,000 damage with this double Acrisia, Sakia with Cardiel combo to Hanarak and Krisk. Absolutely absurd levels of damage. So look, Congrats. If any of those were you, congrats. If they weren't, hope you enjoy this type of video where we're just kind of like looking at the best. I'm not saying these are the teams you should build. I'm just saying this is the best stuff we've seen. There you go, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I'll see you later.